were deeply concerned by the news that a health care worker in Texas has tested preliminarily, preliminarily positive for infection with Ebola virus. Confirmatory testing is underway at CDC and will be completed later today. We don't know what occurred in the care of the index patient, the original patient in Dallas, but at some point there was a breach in protocol, and that breach in protocol resulted in this infection. The healthcare worker developed symptoms on Friday. They were assessed uh, last night and this morning, uh, or last night, I should say. They were, today is Sunday. Uh, they were assessed uh, Friday and uh, tested yesterday, and the Laboratory Response Network Laboratory in Austin, Texas, tested their result preliminarily positive. That result came in late last night, uh, about exactly 12 hours ago, and I will outline the steps that we have been taking uh, before, since, and in the future to address this. The individual was self-monitoring, and immediately on developing symptoms as appropriate, she contacted the healthcare system, and when she came in, she was promptly isolated. The level of her symptoms and indications from the test itself suggest that the level of virus that she had was low. There are four things that we're doing at this point. First, to make sure that we do everything possible to care safely and effectively for this individual. Second, assessing her possible contacts from the moment she developed symptoms. And the CDC team lead for the Dallas investigation has interviewed her, and it appears at this time that there is only one contact who may have had contact with her while she may have been infectious. That individual is under active monitoring. Third, we are evaluating other potential healthcare worker exposures because if this individual was exposed, which they were, it is possible that other individuals were exposed. We know that this individual did provide care to the index patient on multiple occasions, and that care included extensive contact. Fourth, we will undertake a complete investigation of how this may have occurred. That's so important so we can understand it better and intervene to prevent this from happening in the future. I want to go into a little bit more detail first on what we are doing to promote safe and effective care, and then on the investigation. In terms of safe and effective care, we had already begun several days ago to ramp up the education and training of healthcare workers at this facility. The care of Ebola can be done safely, but it's hard to do it safely. It requires meticulous and scrupulous attention to infection control and even a single inadvertent innocent slip can result in contamination. Second, we are recommending to the facility that the number of workers who care for anyone with suspected Ebola be kept to an absolute minimum. Third, we recommend that the procedures that are undertaken on to support the care of that individual be limited solely to essential procedures. Fourth, we're looking at personal protective equipment, understanding that there is a balance and putting more on isn't always safer. It may make it harder to provide effective care. So all aspects of personal protective equipment. And fifth, we're recommending that there be a full-time individual who is responsible only for the oversight, supervision, and monitoring of effective infection control while any patient with suspected or confirmed Ebola is being cared for. CDC has sent additional staff to Texas to assist with this response, and we will continue to work closely with them. 
In the investigation itself, we look at three different phases. What happens before someone goes in to an area where someone with suspected or confirmed Ebola is being cared for? What happens in that space? And what happens when they leave? The two areas where we will be looking particularly closely is the uh, performance of kidney dialysis and respiratory intubation. Both of those procedures may spread contaminated materials and are considered high-risk procedures. They were undertaken on the index patient as a desperate measure to try to save his life. In taking off respiratory protective equipment, uh, we identify this as a major potential area for risk. When you have gone into and potentially soiled or contaminated gloves or masks or other things, to remove those without any risk of any contaminated, mater contaminated material uh, touching you and being uh, then on your uh, clothes or face or skin and leading to an infection is critically important and not easy to do right. So these are areas that the investigation will look at, but we don't know what it will find. We'll be doing that over the coming days. Before I turn it over to Dr. Lakey, uh, the Commissioner of the Texas Department of State Health Services, I do want to make two final points. The first is that, unfortunately, it is possible in the coming days that we will see additional cases of Ebola. This is because the health care workers who cared for this individual may have had a breach of the same nature of the individual who appears now to have a preliminary positive test. That risk is in the 48 people who are being monitored, all of whom have been tested daily, none of whom so far have developed symptoms or fever, and in any other health care workers who may have been exposed to this index patient while he was being cared for. We're still determining how many health care workers that will be. That is an intensive investigation. It takes many hours of tracing steps. We'll always cast the net wider. There, though, is no risk to people outside of that circle of the health care workers who cared for the individual patient and the initial 48 patients or contacts who had definite or possible contact with the index patient who we've already identified. The second point I want to make is that what we do to stop Ebola is to break the links of transmission, to break the chains of transmission. And we do that by making sure that every person with Ebola is promptly diagnosed, that they're promptly isolated, that we identify their contacts, and that we actively monitor their contacts every day for 21 days. And if they develop symptoms or fever, we do the same process again. That's how we have stopped every Ebola outbreak in history, except the one currently in West Africa. That's how we stopped it in Lagos, Nigeria. That's how we will stop it in Dallas. So the breaking the links in the chain of transmission is the key to preventing further spread.